Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is June the 19th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, today went swimmingly, I'd say. Uh, happy Juneteenth. Uh, hopefully you are enjoying the day, taking it in. Um, you know, obviously I would say this isn't a, a for us holiday, but that being said, I'm obviously happy to see everyone, you know, being a part of it, being included and, 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 and celebrating, you know, even though, you know, obviously a lot went down to make Juneteenth what it is, uh, you know, but obviously it ends with, you know, people being free. And I think that that's a very key part of it, even though, I mean, you could always say, like, well, you know, or it was, are we really free? Da, 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 da. We could get into that whole thing. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to, that's not how I really want to start the episode. That being said, uh, let's make it about me and myself and I. Uh, let's see, Food Corner. What would we eat last night? I had um, Mexican beef and rice bowl. It was yummy. It was good. Uh, alongside that, I had some chips and I uh, fried two of the tortillas two of the tortillas and uh, put one skillet and uh, some tortilla chips. It was all very yummy. Went down well. Uh, let's see. Uh, the the, the workday was fine. Uh, generally was like one of those days where like I didn't have any dead time, but um, it wasn't busy. So we'll take it. Also, a little bit of add-on. Uh, we got treats today. I guess. I guess for Juneteenth, uh, they treated us to ice cream. So there. And and I will say, I, I noticed this at some point in the year. Um, it's like, hey, we're kind of getting a little bit skimpy on the treats. And what I mean by that is, like, they're showing up and they're giving us like back to back like popcorn into like double ice cream type beat or like snow cone and ice cream, which to me is the same thing. You could actually get a snow cone from the cone. I don't care about that. I don't want that. Um, so, you know, I eventually, because I'm kind of used to my company, kind of treating a little bit better, you know, once a month at least. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, in this economy, in this society, like, you got to give me good treats. Otherwise, we're going to riot and hopefully form a union. <laughs> Maybe even in that order. I don't even know or care. No, I don't know. I'm joking. I'm just joshing. Just Drake and joshing around. Uh, let's see here. Um, is there anything else I really wanted to add from the personal stuff? No, I think we're good. Uh, it feels Wednesday, man. Uh, let's go ahead and do our startup and we'll get into some news. Okay. Oof. First story. <clears throat> Our first story uh, comes from the BBC. Putin arrives in North Korea ahead of talks with Kim Jong Un. Russian President Vladimir Putin arrived in North Korea to a red carpet welcome on Tuesday night at the start of his first visit to the totalitarian state in 24 years. Mr. Putin was met on the tarmac by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and flanked by a military guard of honor. The pair talked anim animatedly for several minutes. The two leaders last met in September at the Vashnok Vashtokni Cosmodrome in Russia's Far East, but this is Mr. Putin's first trip to Pyongyang since 2000. The uh, ties between the two pariah states have increased in recent years, especially since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. North Korea needs help with space technology after its recent failure to put a second spy satellite into orbit, as well as food, fuel, and foreign currency. Russia faces a continued shortage of weapons in its war um, in Ukraine. Now, in terms of like them actually doing this exchange, uh, Everyone kind of knows that it's like, okay, th this is what they're doing. They're, they're approving this thing, and they're kind of making a big gesture, meet and greet about it. Um, but essentially, out loud, they're not actively saying like, hey, we're giving them lethal aid for 
them to help us with this space stuff. It's just that, like, it's a known known, or known unknown, I guess you should say. If I'm going to get it right, if I'm going to get my full gin rummy on, if you know, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it it's interesting to me because it's like, it, it's kind of funny to see, like, uh, Putin on tour, you know, because he rarely goes out. He rarely is seen out there. I mean, shit, I think they, they have that uh, warrant for his arrest, like, international, like, the one they're trying to put on Netanyahu, but probably won't even fucking do. Um... But he can't go many places. So, you know, you can say, oh, maybe he has few friends. Not many people are fucking with Putin. But in this situation, he kind of gets to, like, actually kind of step out. And, like, you see him, like, with this big, like, shitting grin while, like, there's people, like, ah, oh, we're so happy to see you. Here's a bunch of flowers. Ah, oh, you're so cool. We love you. Great leader. Um, so, yeah, good for him. Good for them. I'm glad everyone uh, is having a good time. Uh, they got to trash on the West, which, you know, I love to see that. love to hear that. Um, but I mean, essentially, it's, it, to me, it always feels mirrored. Like I said, there's really just no good actors when we're talking about any of these great powers, whether it's, you know, in the East or the West, whatever. They all have their fucking flaws and faults. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought this was an interesting meetup. Uh, so I figured, hey, we'll go ahead and talk about it. I don't know if there's really anything else I wanted to pull from here. Um, no, we'll go ahead and call that cool. Uh, but I'll tell you what's not cool. Fires. Fires are not cool, and then, and there are, uh, there's a lot of them. Um, from Axios, thousands evacuated as New Mexico declares wildfire emergency. Two growing wildfires near a popular New Mexico resort town and historic Native American reservation killed at least one person and destroyed more than 1,400 structures as officials rushed to evacuate thousands of people on Tuesday. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham declared an emergency Tuesday in the states uh, Lincoln County and Mascalero, Mascalero Apache Reservation and ordered additional National Guard members to the scene. Uh, Grisham's uh, spokesperson, Michael Coleman, said no additional details were immediately available about the death, but the South Fork fire and Sal- uh, Salt fire in New Mexico are among 23 large fires burning across uh, the western U.S. and impacting air quality amid a record heat wave and high winds. California is facing the largest number of big blazes, including 10, um, or 10 including the Post Fire, which was burning across nearly uh, 15,700 acres in Los Angeles and Ventura counties and was 31% contained as of Tuesday evening according to state and national officials. So yeah, uh, this is seemingly a growing thing. Uh, I know that climate change is attributed here, um, which, you know, does not surprise me. Like the world is just getting hotter and hotter and hotter, which just kind of leads to more adverse situations where you just have dried out, you know, uh, I want to say foliage, um, and essentially just really hot temperatures, just begging for a spark. And then next thing you know, you have a fire that is just going unchecked, uncontained. Um, so yeah, I mean, you have one situation where it's 31%, but then in others, it's like there's no containment. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's scary, you know, because one, it, it's your life um, on the line, potentially. You know, you can be waking up or you could just be like hanging out. Next thing you know, oh my gosh, we have to go. You don't even have time to even pack up. Not to mention, you're leaving. So hopefully, yes, you live. Hopefully, you know, that that's good. That's the most important thing, obviously. But then picking up the pieces, you know, in that kind of situation, is, it's got to be its own kind of devastation. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, I wanted to make sure we covered that. Uh, let's get to some tragic situation that took place in my uh, home state from the Atlanta Black Star. I will break your face. Ohio cop slams black teen to the ground, bloodies his nose, then drags him back to a car by his locks in shocking body camera video. An Ohio cop was fired from his job after shocking body cam footage showed him violently arresting a 14-year-old black boy in February for a pedestrian traffic violation. According to this uh, Columbus dispatch, Donovan uh, Beaver and another cop saw a group of teenagers lingering in the street at a crosswalk near an apartment complex on February 19th. Both cops drove up to the teens and said, let's chat, and the teens ran off. One officer got out of the car and chased them on foot while uh, Beaver drove around in pursuit. 
Beaver's partner caught up with uh, the two of the teens, pulled out his gun, and raised it at both boys while ordering them to get on the ground, both threatening to shoot them. Both teens followed his orders. Now, this is where it's like, hey, this is a very hostile, aggressive thing for essentially just loitering. But, like, if it just stopped here, that, to me, would be more or less textbook. Like, you, 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 you round them up, you say, okay, you guys shouldn't have ran away, da-da-da-da-da, and then you, you do the fucking bullshit cop shit where you run them up and try to get them on whatever. But it gets fucking worse from here. Bevers, Bevers, fuck it, fuck it, dude. We're calling him Bevers, dude. Bevers' body cam footage showed him pull up uh, pull up his police car to the area where his partner had detained both teens. He's seen getting out of his car and running toward the scene. The boys were already on the ground, but Bever uh, ran up to one teen, bit down or bent down, grabbed his locks, and slammed his face to the ground, bloodying his nose in the process. The teen, the teen is seen groaning in pain and in distress while Bever cuts or cuffs him and begins roughly searching the teen's pockets, saying he's searching him for a gun. Because it's like, like I said, we're looking for something at this point. Um, uh, police, off, uh, police officials also said he uh, struck the teen in his groin during the arrest, which is unfucking necessary Like I said, on top of the fucking beatdown he's already put down on this kid, who's already been apprehended at this point. You've done everything but put the cuffs on him. And now you're, you're, you're just fucking him up like you're Elliot Stabler. And this is like the worst rapist you've ever run into. Uh, the teen yells, I'm sorry, and I'm complying repeatedly. And Bevers, uh, and tells Bever he doesn't have a gun. In the footage, Bever is heard saying to the teen, you move, I will break your face. Motherfucker, you've already done it. You've already fucked up my fucking nose. After searching him, Bever drags a teen by his locks, which obviously you should understand. I shouldn't have to convey to you that is very painful and not humane thing to do to someone, um, especially someone who's just fucking run away. I don't care if he was a, a cold, hardened criminal. You don't do that to them. It's literally the fucking law that they're supposed to be fucking serving and goddamn protecting, whatever. Um, but yeah, Bever drags the teen by his locks back to his car as they approach uh, his vehicles, uh, his vehicle, I'm sorry. Bever asked the teen, you got AIDS? This is like a very fucking classic thing that cops will do where they will bludgeon you to death or damn near, uh, sick a dog on you, leave you in a puddle of your own fucking mess and have the audacity or some shit to be like, are you going to infect me? Actually, now that I think about it, now that I'm done with my barbarian rage berserk, are you going to fuck me up with your blood? Because it's all over me. Like, go to hell. Like, just ghoulish fucking behavior when like, like when you actually stop and think about that shit um but yeah there's a response from columbus police chief elaine bryant um i was angry disappointed upset uh columbus police chief elaine bryant said of the arrest uh that is not uh what we reflect as columbus division of police um, the majority of our officers have great relationships with our community. I'm sure they do. Uh, within hours of the arrest, Bever's gun and badge were confiscated, and he was placed on leave. He was finally terminated from his position on June 10th, which is why we're kind of talking about this a little bit more now. That's fucking crazy. And the craziest thing to me is, like, you assaulted a person. And, like, no, we're not going to do anything about it. This is the best day, the best case outcome from the situation, I believe. And that makes me very upset. Because, like, no, like, some shit like this happened literally with a body cam on? Like, no, I don't care if you had a badge on during the time. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. There should be more consequences than you just losing your fucking job. Um, not to mention what happened to the other guy, you know? Um, but, you know, I guess that's an issue for another fucking day. I don't know. Um, so yeah, man, this, this bums me out. I feel bad for the, the teenagers involved in this kind of situation. Like, you can be like, well, they shouldn't have been standing out there. There's, there's nothing wrong with just fucking hanging out. You're not being a fucking problem to society. You're not doing anything wrong. If the cops had handled this in a situation where they come up to them and say, hey, like, you guys just got to, like, you know, move, lo relocate. Because I get it. This is a law that you set in place so that you can do this shit, so you can harass motherfuckers and, like, try to get them for something. Like, you can just do your due diligence and move the fuck on. But essentially, they rolled up, and yeah, you know, the kids did a reaction. Something I know I've done at a mall with my friends, just hanging out, you know, just chilling, and the next thing you know, you got Paul Blart on your ass. And that's just Paul Blart. 
yeah, we hit, we fucking hit the bricks. We ran. Like, that's the shit that you do when you're young. You shouldn't then be tr- fucking hunted down and then put a gun upon you and then get beaten fucking senseless and dragged by your hair. Like, I, I just don't know. Like, what is what, what Roman Praetorian is this? I don't know, man. Um, anyway, I'm done. I'm hitting my boiling point, and it's hot. It's still fucking hot. <laughs> uh, I have one more thing I wanted to cover, and then I will let you go. Uh, we're doing true crime, even though I would say what, what those cops did was a real crime. Um, anyway, let me do my uh, last break, and then we'll go ahead and close it out. Ooh wee, baby. Ooh. Okay. From Kark. Who? <coughs> Kark. dot com seems to be like an NBC affiliate. Who? Excuse me. Alabama man. <coughs> excuse me. Wanted in connection with multiple killings seen in Moralton. Police search underway. Ooh, a hiccup into a burp. <clears throat> into another burp. Terrible combination. I'm in pain. Okay, Spain without the fucking S. Police in Moralton said they are searching for an Alabama man wanted in connection to multiple killings after he was seen at a local hotel Tuesday. Officials with the Moralton Police Department said the suspect, 50-year-old Stacy Drake from Birmingham, was seen on surveillance footage at a hotel in Moralton. Officers also said that Arkansas uh, State Police notified them that the vehicle used in the homicides was parked at the hotel. So, I mean, dude is just on, I, I don't, I, can you say it's a spree? It's probably not a spree because, like, uh, the time span or something, I, I hate this shit. There's always, like, stipulations, like, it, 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 it's, a, it's a mass murder if it's this, it's a spree killing if it's that, you're a serial killer if it's this way. Like, I can't keep up with all these fucking methods, man, it's worse than D&D. Um, but ASP officials said Drake is wanted in connection to three homicide cases in Oklahoma, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation named him as a person of interest after authorities found two people dead inside of a business in Gans. So I don't I don't know what the connections are here, but uh, special agents also said he has multiple other felony warrants for his arrest in multiple jurisdictions for charges, including aggravated robbery, carjacking, and murder. So maybe this dude is just a hard case all around, and like we're just catching him mid arc, you know. We're just in the throes of this guy's life. And, and for him, it's just another fucking Wednesday. I don't know. Um, uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of description before we close it out. Drake is described as a white man standing 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighing 185 pounds. Uh, let's see. Images provided by police department by the police department show Drake wearing a dark colored shirt, hat, and glass, sunglasses. Uh, I will say this dude looks very rizzless. Uh, he looks like a ghoulish man, uh, with like a, like one of those really shitty driving kind of caps, like, you know, the shit Common used to wear when he was like actually like peeking. Uh, he's got some really suspicious sunglasses and he looks mean. He looks mad. But I mean, I guess if you're a fucking wanted murderer, I would not have a smile on my face either. Uh, but yeah, um, anyone who has seen Drake is asked to contact the Moralton Police Department at 501-354-0131. Um, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm talking to the world here. You're probably nowhere near Alabama and that's probably for the best or not Alabama. Uh, I don't know. You can say Alabama. I know we, we talked about like three states in one fucking article. Also, I heard someone say Arkansas today. I think they're being funny. They're being a little comedian, you know, and I get it as a fellow podcaster. I understand, but you know, it's, it's Arkansas. You just say Arkansas and who am I to fucking talk? I can't get anything right, but that just felt weird to me that someone was doing that for a bit <laughs> but yeah hopefully they get this guy uh he seems like a really fucking nasty character um but yeah and hopefully i can bring you some more details about maybe like what 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 happened there you know uh, some mo something you know 
but yeah, that's that's the episode. Um, I will say, kind of closing out, uh, circling back to Justin Timberlake. Uh, I love that people are just roasting his shit. It's so funny. It's so fucking funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I don't I don't have anything really else to add. Uh, he was on a lot of drugs when he was pulled over. Not just it wasn't just like driving while intoxicated. I guess that's why like they they put the DWI, not the DUI, or maybe they just do that now. Maybe they just do a catch all. But yeah, he had like a bunch of shit. Tru- Truvada. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I, I should have Googled it, but that's a thing. Uh, he was on Molly. Uh, all-, all kinds of uh, shit. But I mean, I, good for him. I'm, I'm about to Google what is Truvada so we can all learn. What is Truvada? Truvada. Oh no, they're doing the Google AI. It's probably going to be something stupid. Um, The Google AI is saying what oh what oh wow okay all right well let's talk about it um it is a prescription medication used to treat and prevent hiv infection as well as treat hepatitis b so there you go this is dirty laundry that's the only reason i kind of did a chuckle obviously whatever happens that happens if you wind up on that hey there's no shame whatever um but yeah, no, they've been cooking. They've been cooking, old boy. Um, but yeah, that's just been a thing. I felt like, hey, we can go ahead and close out with that. Also, another thing I wanted to close out, speaking of socials, uh, thank you to any new subscribers. I figured, hey, I'm going to be shameless and do a little selfless uh, promotion on the old Facebook. So appreciate any new subscribers. If you wound up listening and, and catching catching the slop for the day, uh, thanks for sticking around this whole way. You're awesome. We love you. Uh, but financial ways to help out support the effort, uh, patreon.com slash Isaiah News. I do some old archive episodes. You want to look at those. Uh, you're just generally helping out the effort, which is pretty good vibes. You know, you're going to put a smile on my face and my heart. Uh, let's see. Free ways to hit me up, though. Isaiah News 1 at gmail.com. Feel free to follow me or the podcast on any of the socials. Like I said, uh, even just subscribing to the YouTube, that, that means a lot. And you can subscribe or follow on the Spotify, whatever platform you're on. Uh, comments are great. Sharing is caring. It can be fun. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I just see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.